No sentient beings have been our mothers. No sentient beings have been our mothers, not just once, but numberless times. All, sen all, sen all mother sentient beings are as kind as the mothers of this life. Even though all kind mother sentient beings want happiness and do not want sufferings even for a moment, However, due to engaging wrongly with regard to objects of abandonment and adoptions, they create a karma that brings forth the result of suffering only. In our minds, sincerely generate loving kindness towards all kind mothers sentient beings thinking. How nice if all kind mothers sentient beings had excellent happiness. That will cause all kind mothers sentient beings to have excellent happiness. May all kind mother sentient beings have excellent happiness. I will cause all kind mother sentient beings to have excellent happiness. Lama, please bless me to be able to do so. Next, we generate compassions to all suffering mothers and ten beings thinking. How now is if three doors of all suffering mothers and ten beings were free from all discordant class? May three doors of all suffering mothers and ten beings to be free from all discordant class. I will cause three doors of all suffering mothers and ten beings to be free from discordant class. Lama, please bless me to be able to do so. Next, we generate Bodhicitta. First, we ask ourselves who should take the responsibility to free all mothers and ten beings from the sufferings of samsara and of lower realms. I should take the responsibility to free all mothers sentient beings from the sufferings of samsara and of lower realms. However, I do not have the ability to do so now. Only those who have achieved the perfect, complete enlightenment have the ability to do so. Therefore, for the sake of all sentient beings, by all means, I want to become Buddha.
Thanks, we generate all encompassing yoga mind, our aspiring conventional bodhicitta, that things for the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Buddha. <clears throat> this transformed into a round moon disk, a white a perfect moon disk at one's heart. <clears throat> And the ultimate bodhicitta, that is one's mind becoming in one taste with emptiness, that all phenomena are lacking of inherent existence. This transform into a white five pronged vajra on top of the moon disk. And we meditate on emptiness for a short while. That I exist neither intrinsically one with nor intrinsically different from the aggregates. Thus, I do not exist intrinsically. Then and it will be very beneficial if we conjoined uh, these sessions with the practice of six perfections. So the first one, the first practice is the practice of generosity. And generosity is about the minds of giving, mainly about the minds of giving. And if we have, if we generate uh, properly the minds of giving, then we conjoin these sessions with the practice of generosity. So during these two during these two hours of listening, contemplating, and meditating on Dharma, whatever roots of virtue that I accumulate, I give it to all sentient beings. That day is another three years ago. Then the soil in that, and then the sun goes to Chibi Cups Rua, Next is the practice of morality. And morality is mainly about the mind of abandoning. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating, and meditating on Dharma, I will abandon my physical, verbal, uh, misdeeds and my mental conceptual thoughts so that they do not manifest. That teach is another sibin yanji sitting by Shiva. That sibin yanji sitting by the Dutch in Nigerina Kanda, Nesa was a cheapy cup straw, and Nesa was a cheapy cup so that and you sell up a gangy can be chum by Natalie, gangy is also with Andolin. And 
ki masih sedih nanti silaturis. The next one is the practice of patience, and patience is mainly about mind that is undisturbed. So that is an undisturbed mind. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating, and meditating on Dharma, whatever physical and mental hardships that occur, I will willingly accept it. I will embrace it. That is just what it's going to do. That's going to be patient in any symbol. That was in the children. Chisinigan the next one is the practice of joyous effort. And joyous effort is a mind enthusiastic for virtue. Another, another way of saying this is a mind taking delight in virtue. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating, and meditating on Dharma, I will uh, take delight in generating, I will take delight in this virtue for the welfare of sentient beings. That and the next one is the practice of meditative concentration. In Lamrim, it says uh, meditative concentration is a mind single pointedly abiding on any of the virtuous object. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, I will single-pointedly focus on the virtuous object and do not get distracted by uh, matters such as one's family matters or work issue and do not get distracted by conceptual thoughts. Number Next one is <clears throat> practice of wisdom. And wisdom is an awareness that thoroughly distinguish uh, the object of abandonment and adoption and thoroughly distinguish the good from the bad. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, I will properly understand the words of the teachings and the meaning of those words. Setting motivation for the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Buddha. For this purpose, I'm going to properly listen to the commentary on the teachings and practice accordingly. In order to benefit sentient beings.
No, you have 10 to use. <clears throat> So the third uh, outline is identifying the bodhicitta that is the result of that training. So I've already talked about seven calls in effect. So it's something that uh, uh, we must understand at, uh, at this point. So when we, when we talk about uh, seven cause and effect, then the first one is uh, recognizing all sentient beings as one's mother. Then there is one way to, uh, to talk about the relationship, the, the causal relationship between the seven cause and effect. The first way is uh, uh, the, first, the first point, seven cause and effect, right? The first point up to the sixth point, up to the sixth, uh, point number six, then these are, cause, these are causes of the result. The result is bodhicitta. So the last one is the result. Bodhicitta is a result. And then the first, uh, from the first up to the sixth one, then these uh, six uh, are causes. So this is the first way to uh, talk about, or to, to, uh, to talk about the, the causal relationship between the seven cause and effect. And the second way of, the second way is uh, the first one being the cause of the later one. So the previous one being the cause of the later one. So, the, for example, uh, recognizing all sentient beings as one mother is the cause of X one. That is my remark. The son of the teacher was such a cutthroat. Jumping Jebus sinking years on the last year. Such a for a such is what a tender photo of the shed, not such a song about the minor. Such a dinner look, tender food, carrying the data, she said, or such a fruit tiller. Then that did a such a little window. Jumping Jebus sinking years or the jumping Jebus that stage. So uh, it's very important uh, how say, to understand the, the outline that or yeah the, the outline. So the outline here is identifying the bodhicitta that is the result of that training. So if we understand because uh, the outline itself uh, already talks about the, uh, the essential meaning or the essential content of what uh, it is going to talk about. So identifying the bodhicitta that is the result of that training. So the result of that, the, the, the training talks about, the training refers to the six causes uh, before the result bodhicitta, which is recognizing all sentient beings as one's mother up to altruistic mind or extraordinary attitude. So depends on, in dependence on these six causes, then one achieved the result that is bodhicitta. <laughs> So the general definitions is taught in ornament for clear knowledge by Maitreya. And he says, Bodhicitta is the desire for perfect, complete enlightenment for the welfare of others. So uh, it's a very a common uh, definition of Bodhicitta. Uh, we should uh, memorize it and we should keep it in our mind because this short definitions of Bodhicitta talks already covers two uh, uh, already covers the bodhicitta and dealt with two types of aspirations. Mm -hmm. 
但我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉得我是觉
quotations from engaging the Bodhisattva way of life, uh, marvelous array sutra and stages of meditations are to identify the nature of these two bodhicitta. Ah, the bodhicitta ni ngasu kita tiga pe ngasu so anda wata ngui guna senji tala ta tu macam ni macam ngui guna ni wa member senji tu juga senji ni ni wa tak dini tu ngasu tu ni dini pol pe easy kan sama ni apa je ngaji tu baca jis pada ni apa tu tu aje di tu ngan ni wa. Mm. So it is classified into two aspiring and engaging bodhicitta. So this is uh, the classification based on nature. And this is uh, the, uh, the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, yeah, so the aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta. So we will identify the, the nature of these two and try to understand. Mm. Members in Jupiter in the Mango, Sini the Boma, Sini the Dodore Mashangua, Sini Dodore, Tommy didn't use the Chitawa. Dakanda members in Jupiter in Sini, that members in Jide, Dakanda, Diba, Mindu Kanguya, easy. The Japanian is Chinese, the Simba Day, Dakanda members in Sini Jan Jure, the National Jure. Dakanda members in Jisoda, Mindu Kanguya, the Japanian is Chinese, the Simba. And this is the same thing. I don't remember. You are Massimbe. 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 You is the definitions of these two types of bodhicitta. So the definitions of aspiring bodhicitta is, it is a common locus of being any of the two, aspiring bodhicitta or engaging bodhicitta, and it is not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So I, I repeat, the definitions of aspiring bodhicitta is, it is a common locus of being any of the two, aspiring bodhicitta or engaging bodhicitta and it is not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So this is uh, definitions of aspiring bodhicitta. And the definitions of engaging bodhicitta is, it is a common locus of being any of the two, aspiring bodhicitta or engaging bodhicitta, and it is explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So engaging bodhicitta, the difference is it is explicitly conjoined. Aspiring bodhicitta, the difference is it is not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. That I'm putting more about Sini the Mia, which is the Machi thing of Jerry Machi, Kanda, a Mindu Karuya, Mindu Karuya, the Japanese Chinese, some massive Vicente Jeduna, that the member Sinti Lauber Kanda. That member Sinti Bosin Jeduna, Japanese Chinese, Simba Jeduna. Yeah. So the so we identify the nature of these two types of bodhicitta and uh, through the definitions, right? So being any of the two aspiring bodhicitta or engaging bodhicitta, so these two are the same. And then the difference between these two is aspiring bodhicitta is not explicit. Uh, explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, whereas engaging bodhicitta, it is uh, explicitly conjoined with uh, the practice of conduct. So this is the difference between these two. What is it? That is the Japanese Chinese sing machine so what you tell that what you should do. That Japanese Chinese sing machine the machine you put it to the sonya. So yes, I'm going to do what machine you put it. Tony, Semba P, number Shay Dinina, Nanchi Tenichi Tendi Treva, Yoban Jibanian Chinese Sibitan, yes. Tet of a maybe dinner, Miss Massimba, and that is, what a Jiba was a Tonsi P, she be. Number Shay Dinita, Nanchi Tenda Navy, in Jiba, shoot up a treva's net, a shoot up a yoga's name, or Nanchi Tenid in Jiba shoot up a yoga. And did you, Nanichi Miss Sumbatilla, that Jibanian Chinese Sumbatilla, yes. Oh dear. 
So then uh, the difference between these two types of bodhicitta is uh, one is explicitly, another one is not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, right? Then we have to understand what does it mean by explicitly conjoined or not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So the meaning of explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct is, so when the mind of giving is manifesting, so when the mind of giving manifests or manifesting, then uh, the strong uh, remembrance and aspiration striving for omniscience is present. So this, this is what it means by explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So when the mind of giving, for example, when the mind of giving uh, manifests or is manifesting, uh, strong remembrance and aspiration striving for omniscience is present, then that is the meaning of explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. Yeah, so it's good, uh, it's very important to understand what does it mean by explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. Because if you do understand, right, if you understand right now, then in the future, when we uh, explain and then using uh, these words, then uh, you will be able to understand uh, the meaning of that sentence or the meaning of the explanations. So, um, so the meaning of explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct is, or it means, uh, there is strong remembrance and aspiration. So I, I rephrase. So there is strong remembrance and aspiration striving for omniscience when the minds of giving manifest. So that is uh, the meaning of explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. Yeah. So then also uh, it's important to understand the boundaries of aspiring bodhicitta and uh, engaging bodhicitta. So when we talk about bodhicitta, so it means, so it already indicates that uh, this doesn't exist, bodhicitta doesn't exist uh, in the mind stream of uh, hearers or solitary realizers. So it, it talks about Mahayanist. So when we talk about Mahayana, then there are five paths. So the path of accumulation, path of preparation, path of uh, seeing, path of meditation, and path of no more learning. So, and then when we um, uh, further divide uh, this, uh, so when we explain further, yeah, when we explain further, then there are 10 grounds. So from, from the first ground up to 10 grounds. So the 11th ground is the path of no more learning. So the path of normal learning. So in other way of saying this is uh, the, uh, the state of enlightenment. 
so when we talk about the path of uh, the Mahayana path of um, uh, accumulations and path of preparations, then they are uh, ordinary beings. So anyone in the Mahayana path of accumulation and path of preparations, then those uh, uh, those beings are ordinary beings. And then uh, the third path is path of seeing. Then the fourth path is path of meditation. And the fifth path is path of no more learning. So path of no more learning refers to the state of enlightenment. So just now when I said uh, there are five paths, and then when you further divide, then it becomes 10 grounds. So 10 grounds is from the first ground and up to 10 grounds. So uh, from first ground up to 10 grounds, then it is a ground of uh, sentient beings. It's a state of sentient beings. And the 11th ground is the state of enlightened being. <laughs> why do we identify five paths here is to identify the boundaries of bodhicitta, the two types of bodhicitta. So uh, uh, aspiring bodhicitta, uh, uh, it covered, uh, how say, the, uh, yeah, so aspiring bodhicitta exists from the Mahayana path of, yeah, exists in the mind stream of those in the Mahayana path of accumulation up to the end of limit or the end of the continuum. So what does it mean by end of continuum? So it is the, uh, the 10th ground. So the, the last moment of 10th ground, is, uh, then in other way of saying this is the end of, uh, the end of continuum. So from uh, the uh, Mahayana path of uh, accumulations up to the end of continuum, which is the last moment of 10th ground. So uh, that is, uh, how is it that the being, uh, uh, the being those who uh, set in equipoise on emptiness. So the, the being who, are, who remain or abide in the meditative equipoise on emptiness. So, and in that state of meditative equipoise, from that state of, uh, yeah, from within the state of meditative equipoise, and the next moment, they achieve the state of uh, enlightenment. So, uh, so up to the end of continuum, which is the, uh, those being who abide in meditative equipoise on emptiness. Mm. 
So aspiring bodhicitta exists from uh, in the mind streams of those in the path of a Mahayana uh, path of accumulations up to the end of continuum, right? So end of continuum means the last moment of 10th ground. So basically it covers, uh, uh, covers from the path of accumulations up to the path of meditations, and then it covers 10 grounds already. So this is the boundary of uh, aspiring bodhicitta. And the boundary of uh, engaging bodhicitta, it exists in the mind stream of those in the path of Mahayana, in the Mahayana path of accumulation up to the state of enlightenment, which is the 11th ground. So it covers uh, from the Mahayana path of accumulations, then uh, uh, till the, the path of, till the path of uh, no more learning, so which is the 11th ground. That is what? That under another day, that is my, then that do my food switch. That is my rabbin of my city's good devonage. That member sitting in Dubas in a good devonage, and the change with the cutting on reaching to a door and dead and do a cheddar cheddar shebata. Is he keeping the rigid cheddar in the sheba shase? That day, Delma Pishan, Delma Pishan, and that member sitting in Dubas in that Delma Pishan loudly, that good devotion, rabbin, not a good day. No, Delma Sension is a good devotion. So the words in entering the Bodhisattva ways uh, is easier to understand by giving an example, by stating an example. So it says, just as one understands the difference between the wish to go and actually going, so the wise should understand the difference between those two accordingly. Well, that member is the condition. Ambo, Dakanda, so to understand the words uh, from the entering the Bodhisattva way, so the difference between uh, aspiring Bodhicitta and engaging Bodhicitta is the wish to go and actually go in. So for example, uh, there, are two pers- uh, there are two persons who wants to go to uh, Kamandu uh, as they go to Kamandu to pay res- uh, to visit uh, the the stupa, so from KL, and they wish uh, wish to go to Kamandu to visit stupa. So these two, uh, uh, these two uh, person, they have the same uh, wish to go to visit the, the stupa in Kamandu. So then the first person to have the wish has the wish to go to Kaman- uh, Kamandu, but uh, doesn't take actions to actually go. And the second person is not only that he has the wish to go to visit uh, the stupa in Kamandu, and he actually uh, uh, put it into actions by uh, walking, by buying, uh, how's it, by, by taking the car and then uh, traveling to uh, the, the airport in order to take flight uh, to Kamandu. So this is the difference between these two. So the first person who only wish to go but do not take actions is the aspiring bodhicitta. And the second person who not only that he, he wishes to go to Kamandu and he actually put it in, and he actually put it into actions, then the second person uh, is an example of 
engaging bodhicitta. That the big tool didn't it work? That big tool like that, I got the movie Chodina and Jagan Dundi, Samba, then Jagan Dundi, Samba Niga, the Tsumba, Archie, then Samba Niga, the Tsumba Karula, then Karula Shavasna. That members in the Jubas in the Niga, she essentially did the Sanji to come up to the Tsumba as that did it. Then I shared. She essentially turned up Sanji to come up to one Debat, Niga, she looked at it. She essentially did the Sanji to come up to a shower. Somebody, So taking this as an, taking this as an example, so uh, these two persons uh, they are same in terms of having uh, the wish to go to uh, visit. Stupa in, uh, in Kamandu, right? So they are, these two persons are the same. So they, they have the same in terms of having the same wish to go to visit uh, the Stupa in Kamandu. So this uh, indicates that aspiring bodhicitta and, and engaging bodhicitta are the same in terms of having the wish to achieve the state of enlightenment for the welfare of sentient beings. So aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta are the same in terms of having the wish to achieve the state of enlightenment for the welfare of sentient beings. Mm. Uh, and so aspiring bodhicitta and combat uh, and engaging bodhicitta are the same in terms of having the wish to achieve the state of enlightenment for the welfare of others, right? So these uh, these two are the same. So whether uh, uh, aspiring bodhicitta and engage engaging bodhicitta, they both have this uh, have this attitude or have the, the wish this wish. So however, engaging bodhicitta has one more uh, quality. So the quality is, the example is uh, not only uh, the, uh, the second person has the wish to go to Kamandu and he actually put it into actions, right, by buying flight ticket, etc. So then through uh, this example, it, has, uh, it indicates that engaging bodhicitta not only has the wish to achieve the state of enlightenment for the welfare of all sentient beings. And on top of that, he, uh, the, uh, I said, uh, the person directly, uh, sorry, the person explicitly engaged in the practice of conduct. So as mentioned just now, explicitly uh, uh, conjoined with the practice of conduct, the meaning of it. So the explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct means that the person uh, explicitly engage in the practice of six perfections. For example, uh, the person uh, guards uh, the morality properly, and then the person practice generosity, and the person cultivate patience, etc. So not only he had, not only the person has the wish, and he uh, and the person engage explicitly in those conduct. Then that is uh, engaging bodhicitta. Mm. That under the Peter Tenigatama, Tim Gotsi, we have a Chishua, 
这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这个是这
ground to refer to the tank ground, the last moment of tank ground. And uh, engaging bodhicitta, it exists from, the, the boundary of engaging bodhicitta is from Mahayana path of accumulation to the 11th ground. So the 11th ground refers to the state of enlightenment. So why do we say that um, uh, aspiring bodhicitta uh, doesn't exist uh, in the 11th ground, which is the state of enlightenment? Because uh, those in the state of uh, enlightenment, and it is always explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, which is six perfections. And there is, there is no such occasions uh, that it is not conjoined with the practice of conduct. Therefore, aspiring bodhicitta, the boundary of aspiring bodhicitta doesn't cover the 11th ground. That is made you whichever digital was made you whichever the that you want to do. Sinjay, the Matsum, we go the Matsum members in Juba Sinjay, then you are going to use over the Sinjay. That upper is going to say one of the two dinner. This is a young man's own meaning of my chevade. That young is your war. Yeah, so it's very important to identify um, the nature, uh, the uh, how's it, the bodhicitta in terms of uh, in terms of nature, because uh, when when bodhicitta is classified in terms of nature, then is uh, there are two. One is aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta. So uh, we always talk about cultivate bodhicitta, cultivate bodhicitta. So it's very important to identify <clears throat> what aspiring and engaging bodhicitta is. So. Uh, after we understand the nature of these two, then now, uh, on top of that, I'm going to uh, ask it to explain uh, aspiring and engaging bodhicitta further. So, um, aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta is not uh, posited based on whether one has achieved the ground or not. So this is uh, the, the, how is it, the first point. So it's not posited based on whether one has achieved the ground or not. So some might think that for those who have achieved the ground, then uh, uh, the bodhicitta is an engaging bodhicitta. And those who haven't achieved the ground, that uh, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of that person is an uh, aspiring bodhicitta. So that is not uh, the way to proceed uh, the difference between aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta. Why? So as I mentioned just now, the boundaries of bodhicitta. So when I explain the boundary of bodhicitta, the, uh, I say whether those who have achieved the ground or not, they have aspiring bodhicitta and they have engaging bodhicitta. Uh, uh, they have aspiring and they have uh, engaging bodhicitta as well, as well. So because just now when we talk about the boundary of two, so aspiring bodhicitta also covers the ten grounds and engaging bodhicitta also covers the ten grounds, right? So difference between aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta is not considered based on whether one has achieved the ground or not. Mm. Members so then the so the difference between aspiring bodhicitta and engaging bodhicitta is not posited whether one has achieved the ground or not. That, that is the first point. And then the second point is the difference between these two types of bodhicitta is not posited whether one has 
uh, obtain bodhisattva vows or not. So some might think that so uh, the bodhisattva in the mind stream of those who have achieved the uh, who has obtained the bodhisattva vows is uh, engaging bodhicitta. And the bodhicitta in the mind stream of persons uh, who haven't achieved or who haven't obtained the bodhisattva vows is uh, aspiring bodhicitta. So this is not the right way uh, to perceive the difference between these two types of bodhicitta because uh, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of bodhisattva whose bodhisattva whose bodhisattva vows has obtained but was but is degenerated, then it is a bodhicitta still. So because the bodhicitta in the mind stream of bodhisattva, whose bodhisattva vows has obtained earlier but is uh, later degenerated, then it is still a bodhicitta. Uh, however, it is still a bodhicitta and it is an aspiring bodhicitta. Oh, that that's <laughs> Chancing so, and uh, the third point is uh, the difference between these two types of bodhicitta is not posited based on whether it is conjoined with the practice of conduct or not. So, the third point is, it is not posited based on whether it is conjoined with the practice of conduct or not. So, so some might think that, oh, but you mentioned just now how is it conjoined with the practice of conduct, right? So then uh, that is the, the difference between uh, engaging bodhicitta and aspiring bodhicitta, right? So the words, uh, how is it the sentence that I mentioned just now is explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So one is explicitly conjoined, another one is not explicitly conjoined. So the words here in this context, so the difference between these two types of bodhicitta is not posited based on whether it is conjoined with the practice of conduct or not. So here, explicitly, the, the words is, is not in this context. It, it's missing. So there, there's no such words in, in this uh, context. So uh, some might think that, oh, uh, how's it? Uh, how's it? it is conjoined with the practice of conduct. Like, uh, uh, yeah, the difference between these two types of bodhicitta is not posited based on whether it is conjoined with the practice of conduct or not, because aspiring bodhicitta in the mind stream of Aya Bodhisattva. So the uh, aspiring bodhicitta in the mind stream of Aya Bodhisattva is conjoined with the practice of conduct. Yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, the, the aspiring bodhicitta in the mind stream of Aya Bodhisattva is conjoined with the practice of conduct. It's just that it is not directly conjoined with the practice of conduct. So the bodhicitta in the mind stream of Aya Bodhisattva 
uh, that is conjoined with the practice of conduct, it is an aspiring bodhicitta. It is not an engaging bodhicitta. Why? Even though it is conjoined with the practice of conduct, but it is not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. And since it is not uh, uh, explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, therefore it is, it is just an aspiring bodhicitta. It is not an engaging bodhicitta. So the person uh, who abide in the meditative equipoise on emptiness, who single-pointedly abiding uh, in meditative equipoise on emptiness, then that, uh, uh, has it, uh, that person has bodhicitta. That person has bodhicitta and that is aspiring bodhicitta. <laughs> Then ジュドジラデンデケシンジェデジュバスンジェイゴマレスオジュドジラマディゲディニチデマディギメンジュキチェバチャウマレスカナデロワデメディキチェバチャウマレスジュドジラデンデケジチトナパチメナパチヨレス
Kishila, can I have one question? When Kishila say explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, which is sixth perfection, can Kishila give some example of explicitly? Because just now also I got the wrong understanding of those who practice six perfection, like generosity or those, they are already become engaging Bodhicitta because they take action. But uh, Gishita said, no, the three points are true. No. So what it does explicitly conjoin can give some lay, um, simpler uh, example. So Gishita, the Juban Yam Lengi Chawe Ngusu Simbe uh Nusu Chanjo Mm. Yeah, so explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct, then uh, the meaning, the, the example is like uh, a person uh, who has the bodhicitta, a person who has bodhicitta, and, uh, and uh, on top of that, the person explicitly engaged in the practice of six perfections. So explicitly engaged in the practice of six perfections, perfections means that um, I say the person has the strong aspiration to practice six perfections. So that is the example of explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. Another person who has bodhicitta, but uh, the person, but he doesn't explicitly engage in the practice of conduct, and then he just stay relaxed. He just stay relaxed. Then this, uh, the second person, then it is uh, not explicitly, is an example of not explicitly conjoined with the practice of conduct. Michela, can I uh, ask also a question? Uh, mm -hmm. I want to be sure at which, at what minimal qualification in one's mind stream before one has entered the past accumulation. And the second question related to it is at what at what sort of mainstream qualification before one is actually a bodhisattva? One is to enter the path of accumulation at what level? And one is when one says so and so is a bodhisattva, what does that actually mean? What sort of qualification has he um, in, in his mainstream before you can call a person a bodhisattva? So these are the two related questions. The question to Kwa is what is the measure of strong aspiration in uh, minimum minimum to be in the past yeah. of accumulation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is in the mindset? Is it aspiring bodhicitta genuinely generated in the mindset before you say I have entered the past of accumulation? 
Then the second question, when you qualify to be a bodhisattva, what sort of minimal qualifications are you supposed to have? Does it include, uh, for example, emptiness, things like that, before you are a bodhisattva? Bodhicitta and bodhisattva, you must have, you know, the, 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 the two is a related question. So one is how to enter the path of determination, put it this way. And the other, when does one become a bodhisattva? Hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, my answer to, uh, I have only one answer for your two questions because that answer itself answer both of your questions. So as what I mentioned just now, uh, uh, the, the questions that I posted just now was um, the entrance to Mahayana. So the entrance to Mahayana is Bodhicitta, right? So whenever Bodhicitta arises in the mind stream of a person, then that person become a Bodhisattva. So the, the answer to, uh, to your second questions. And and that person has entered the path of the Mahayana path of accumulation. So the answer to, to two of your questions is whenever bodhicitta arises in the mind stream of a person, so at that time, then that person has become a bodhisattva, and that person has entered the Mahayana path of accumulation. Okay, good question. Yeah, they I think. But okay, so uh, in the in the and the, uh, the entering the middle way, uh, it said that to be a Buddhisattva, you must have the three types of compassion. One is compassion directed towards sentient beings. The other one is the understanding directed to sentient beings who are in, suffering due to uh, impermanence. And then the other one is that uh, not understanding non-duality. You know, not understanding. So, so to have these three qualifications, then you qualify to be a Bodhisattva. I'm not sure I'm right, no. That's what I thought. Uh, I, I, uh, something like that in the, in the, in the entering the middle way, Santa Kirti's entering the middle way. Hmm. So, maybe, uh, Kaza, Kaza, Uma Juba, Uma Juba, the Tawa, Kaza, Tawa Tawa Roa, Tawa Tawa Roa, any day, a Chanchu Simba Chala. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Since it's only maybe Ninji is other Kaza Tijipe, Ninji Himala, Mutaba to be Hiroji Singumari, Tony to be Hiroji Singumari. Kunda, the Yangasurona, the Namibe, and Ninji said the Simjil, and it's only Ninji. Since it's only Ninji Tabutam, Ninji Susha as well. Since it's only maybe Ninji Digi, Ninji Digi Kanda, Tony to be Hiroda, and the Mutaba to be Hiroji Singumari, is in the tongue of Ninji. だ、とんにじかさで、とんとべしろとすぐまれす。すぐまれすてに、すぐちゃんのみにじ。うん。だ、にばでちょいのみにじそわでげ。ろわ。え、だ、ちょいのみにじよけてげ。だ、かな、また
may not have the third type of compassion, which is, mm, yeah, may not have the third type of compassion uh, uh, because the compassion is, yeah. Then they inzani they change to simba ina the mi me la mi be ninge de yo maro. The young kid, the young kid, the young kid yo maro. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So the our body satavas has the third type of compassions, uh, the compassions that observe the non reference or non objectifying, non objectifications are, and the our body satavas who has it, and the our body satavas who doesn't have uh, the third type of compassions. Okay, <laughs> Uh, actually, Kachila, I thank you very much for the explanation. I thought I knew a little bit about Buddhista. Now I think I'm more confused because it's quite expensive. <laughs> so I, that's why I asked this type of question. It's, it's getting a little bit more, more comprehensive and quite complicated. <laughs> thank you very much. That's uh, they don't yeah, so uh so I continue the questions that I asked just now. So uh Totoko has already answered uh, my first questions and it's very good. So uh Bodhicitta is the entrance to Mahayana. So to Further, uh, my questions. The, my second question is, bodhicitta, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of those in the Mahayana path of uh, preparations, is that bodhicitta, uh, uh, is that bodhicitta an entrance to Mahayana or not? So my question is, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of those in the path, uh, in the Mahayana path of uh, preparations. Is that bodhicitta an entrance to Mahayana or not? Ishila, to, to answer that question, can I clarify? Uh, to answer your second question, I would like to clarify the first question. When Geshila said, the first question is, when will one enter, enter into Mahayana? Answer is Bodhicitta. So to answer the second question about the path of preparation, I would like to ask Geshila, does entering into Mahayana has to be entered into the path of accumulation? Because enter into Mahayana, my answer is Bodhicitta. Geshila said correct. But enter into part of accumulation, it has to be uncontrived, spontaneous, 24 hours kind of bodhicitta. The first answer, my answer about bodhicitta, is it can happen sometime, it may not happen all the time. But uh, uh, to enter Mahayana, does it equal, uh, my question is, Keshila, does one enter the Mahayana means it already entered into the path of accumulation? Then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, before I answer your questions, first you answer my, my second question. <laughs> okay. Uh, the answer for the second question is Kishila asked, does the bodhicitta in the mind stream of a person who is already in the part of preparation, is that the bodhicitta that entered to Mahayana? I would say it's the entrance to Mahayana or no? Yeah. Uh, I would say yes, because 
You should let it my Espresso Parichita is from the path beginning until the 10th ground. So it should be the same. Yeah. I, I agree on that. <laughs> Yeah, and the as a Jesa, and the teaching you to raise a kind of not a job. That teaching your own Jesus in the Tanjugo is not that. That the young woman to the lady are that. That's a rest, no sarist. No sare. The young woman lady are that much as a rest. Tambo to what they are. Tambo to what the children. To the members, she didn't to tell them to go lie on my. To the members, she didn't to go raise a lie on my. Mares, members in the front, each and members in the front, you can go Mares. Mares. And that John Obi is sent to the lawyer Mate, you go Mares. They get my image of the ship. Yeah. So, uh, how say if you answer yes to the second questions, then you have already, uh, how say kind of uh, lose, uh, how say lose the, the positions of your first questions already because. So in general, aspiring bodhicitta is not the entrance to Mahayana. So in general, uh, aspiring bodhicitta is not the entrance to Mahayana. So the uh, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of those in the path of uh, preparation in the Mahayana path of preparations is not the entrance to Mahayana. So that's why we follow the last teaching of Jugu. So the Chida Senji de Rese. Teaching Jugu. Jugu. So the Chida Senji de Senji Chi Chane Chida Senji de the Bachim Jugu Rese. That Tona Kiji Tambo Jiji Senji de Chit Tona Kiji Tambo Jiji Senji de. So in general, the entrance to Mahayana is Bodhicitta. So that is in general, yeah. So uh, and the bodhicitta in the mind stream of, uh, in the mind stream of those in the path of my in the Mahayana path of uh, accumulations, the first moment of it. So, yeah. So I, I repeat, uh, the bodhicitta in the mind stream of those who uh, initially uh, achieve uh, the um, the how say who in who this is the first moment. Yeah. So uh, the bodhicitta. The first moment of bodhicitta in the mind stream of those uh, in the Mahayana path of accumulation, that bodhicitta is the entrance to Mahayana. That teaching is so long. Do you enjoy it? This song is about the Sanji Kanga and Jugu Mahas. Because the teaching is so long. So long. Do you enjoy it? Dim. 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 That teaching is so long. Can't put it in two to one. The teaching is so long. 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 Yeah, so when one first entered uh, the Mahayana path of accumulation, then one first entered the small uh, path of uh, small path of uh, accumulation. So the the intermediate uh, yeah so the, the intermediate uh, path of accumulation onwards so when we talk about path of accumulation then is of uh, three levels so the small intermediate and and great so uh uh how say the the intermediate onwards intermediate onwards uh, up to the state of enlightenment that bodhicitta is not the entrance to mahayana so uh, so by saying this, then I already, how is it, uh, how is it, I already mentioned the answer for my second questions. So the answer is no. Then you go say what the Tibetan land you go say the two top in a Tibetan botan with two two matona Tibetan botan with the city Sengi de Renduna, a two tona or Sengi de two top in a Sengi de Tona Tibetan botan with Tibetan two Sengi de two matona Tibetan botan with Tibetan. 
so what does it mean by entrance to Mahayana? So uh, as a literal meaning, uh, yeah, so the, the meaning of those words, uh, entrance to Mahayana. So entrance of Mahayana means that if the quality, uh, if the quality is achieved, then one is uh, considered a Mahayanist. If the quality is not achieved, then uh, one is not considered as a Mahayanist in a general context. So the, the quality refers to uh, Bodhicitta. So if Bodhicitta, is, if Bodhicitta is achieved or has achieved, then one is considered as a uh, teaching. Uh, yeah, then one is included in uh, Mahayanist. And if one doesn't, if the uh, Bodhicitta is not achieved, then one is not included as a Mayanist. That be the Solon Ridge is in the Jugo Mayi because he carries in a Tiji Solon Ridge is a Sikanga Matova Tepachi or Tanta Singi Yorwa. Tiji Solon Dini as a day, Dan Dri, Chembo, Dona, Kanga, the Sun Matova in a Tepachi or Tanta Singi Kanga Yorwa. Matova. Oh, the Sun Matova. Tiji Solon Dri and Matova. Dona Matonga, Satambo Matonga, Matonga in Ara. ちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっ
Sinji Matona Tabachi would have a Sigma race. This is a at Sinji in the good race, love race, not on to Sita. This is a tona teaching the Sinji Sinji. And you see the tona Tabachi would have a single race, Sinki said, Tashi is in the tona. Well, Chandu is in Korakita, but Chavo race. The Chandu is in Korak, Tona Tabachi would have a sea. Chandu is in the Matona Tabachi would have a Sigma was. Then Matio said that that Chandu is in the Chandu is in the Chandu. Yeah, so the entrance to Mahayana. So before, uh, as a, besides this, and we also talk about the entrance, or uh, yeah, so it's like the entrance to become the entrance to becoming a Buddhist. So if you have that, if you have the required qualities, then uh, one has entered or has uh, become a Buddhist. So similarly, the entrance to Mahayana, if you possess, the, if you have the quality, uh, then uh, you, uh, how say, then you entered into Mahayana. So the entrance to uh, Mahayana in general is Bodhicitta, right? So if one uh, has developed Bodhicitta, then one is. Uh, uh, one is considered as a Mahayanist, and if one uh, ha uh, hasn't developed the uh, bodhicitta, then one is not considered to be a Mahayanist. So, yeah, so the bodhicitta in the mind stream of those in the path of uh, preparations, then that bodhicitta is not an entrance to uh, Mahayana. <laughs> Yeah, so in, in, I'll say, if a person asks you, uh, what is the entrance to Mahayana, then you have to immediately give the answer, it is Bodhicitta. So the entrance to Mahayana uh, is uh, bodhicitta in general. So because then if the person asks you why, because if one has achieved, uh, if, if one has cultivated bodhicitta or developed bodhicitta, then one has entered uh, the, the and one has entered into Mahayana. Oh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so then my next question is what is the entrance to becoming <laughs> yeah, what is the entrance to becoming a Buddhist? The refuge. Take the refuge. Yeah, so the, the, the question is uh, the entrance to becoming a Buddhist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the answer is uh, taking refuge. Mm -hmm. Ishila can ask uh, getting more confused now, Ishila. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to ask question as well. Yeah, yeah. That question, okay, yeah, yeah, that question. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Taking it on here. So, so what Geshla is saying is that the uh, entrance to Mahayana is Buddhicitta. So, entrance to Mahayana and with Buddhicitta, then one can attain Buddhahood, right? That's what is like called Buddhicitta leads to Buddhahood. Buddhas are born from Buddhisattvas. So what Geshe is saying is that since you can generate uh, Buddhicitta without having entered the paths, the five paths and the ten grounds, does that mean that the ten paths, the, the five paths and ten grounds are not exclusive to attaining enlightenment? There are other yogic paths uh, or other, other, other paths, other Buddha's teachings that can lead you to attain Buddhahood so long as you have generated Bodhicitta in the mind stream. Yeah, like sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, Mr. Kwa. Uh, so, uh, so just to clarify right. your question. Like the five paths and ten grounds, as yeah. explained in this text, is not exclusive towards attaining Buddhahood. So long as you have Bodhicitta, then you qualify to become a, a, a Buddha, or entitled to get a Buddha. And there are other uh, Buddha's teachings that can lead you to the same uh, destination of becoming a Buddha. Is that right? Is yes. there, am I confused on that? Yeah, sorry, I, 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 I get your question. So let us, I'm saying I that, 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 yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that the part that the five parts and ten grounds is not exclusive to a sentence. Just now you mentioned, yeah, just now you mentioned that because one the qualification can, is Buddhicitta. Qualification yeah, is Buddhicitta. 
time I'm trying to see other parts, for example, the Mahamudra or whatever it is, like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, there are other, other, other approaches towards attending Buddhahood rather than following this uh, vast lineage, you know? Or maybe yes. a, a profound lineage only, without the vast lineage, you can also attain Buddhahood. So long as you have generated Buddhichitta, he said, I'm, 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 I'm a bit confused now, so that's why I have to ask this question. Hopefully I can. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Mr. Kwa. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so can I, can, are there other are 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 approaches to attending Buddhahood? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, once you have generated Buddhichitta, as Bishra said, you can generate Buddhichitta without having entered the past. So it that there are other alternatives or not. Mm-hmm. If you are entering the past, you can generate Buddhichitta. So long as you have Buddhichitta, yeah. Then there is a qualification that thing that would. So is there an Yeah, so uh yes, yeah, Tangi de Kazan, Kishla Gi, Tana any the teaching you go and they just uh chan chuki same raw, same key or is la in the Kishla Gi Tangi de Shiva in a any uh the Kaza Lamma Shume Lamma Shuba Janchu sem uh Janchugi sem the key tuba. Teaching teaching lam la mashunye uh in it the uh chanchugi sem the key tuba. で、天地に泣きしらぎすんばれ。で、よもろ。で、で、よもろ。で、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、天地に、
that bodhicitta is an aspiring bodhicitta and it is not an uh, engaging bodhicitta. So, and however, during the post meditations, then yes, uh, it can be an uh, engaging bodhicitta. Yeah. Uh, to just stop here. Thank you. That is all. Yes. Stop here. That do I know? Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, so if you have uh, any questions, then please ask him. Next uh, Dr. Class. Dr. Has started yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Dr. Go has probably said uh, questions to ask. So please ask him next class. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <coughs> so we conclude with dedication. We dedicate the roots of virtue accumulate, especially through these Dharma discussions. May it be the complete cause for Buddha Dharma to, uh, to flourish in all ten directions and flourish in all ten directions and for sentient beings uh, to have excellent happiness. We also dedicate these roots of virtue to upholders of the Buddha's teachings in the ten directions represented by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So may they live eons long. Um, uh, uh, yeah, may they live eons long, uh, excellent health, and may their enlightened activities and uh, uh, holy wishes be accomplished instantaneously and spread to all ten directions. And in particular, we also dedicate these roots of virtue to our beloved teacher, Kepsi Lama Sobaro <coughs> Yeah, uh, may Rumichie be uh, quickly recovered from the manifest sickness, live eons long, and may Rumichie's holy wishes and holy enlightened, enlightened activities spread to all ten directions and be accomplished instantaneously. And we also dedicate these roots of virtue to the world peace and may ha excellent happiness prevails the world. May the world be free from disaster such as a world's conflict and natural disaster caused by uh, the imbalance of all elements. <coughs> And we also dedicate these roots of virtue to those who uh, pass away, especially those who pass away in wars and conflict and pandemic. Uh, may their negativity is accumulated since speaking less time to purify immediately and quickly achieve the state of enlightenment. And we also dedicate these roots of virtue to those who suffer, uh, especially those who suffer, especially in wars, conflict and pandemic. So may they be quickly, may they quickly be free from their sufferings and may their life be filled with excellent happiness. And we also dedicate these roots of virtue to, to those who help others, uh, such as doctors, nurses, and those who help others financially. So uh, may, they, uh, uh, may they live eons long, excellent health, and may their life be filled with excellent happiness. <coughs> Doggy, <laughs> <laughs> 